morning. I would like to convene the March 2024 Bridges and Tunnels Committee meeting. Ms. Pascone, are there any public speakers? Good morning. We have three members of the public registered to speak today. As a reminder, we ask that all speakers adhere to the MTA's rules of conduct and decorum. I would also like to remind our public speakers that in the interest of time and fairness to all speakers, we limit everyone to two minutes. Please be aware of the clock in the front of the room and the warning light you will see, reminding you that you have 30 seconds left to conclude your remarks. The first speaker will be Murray Bowden, following will be Jesse Fee, followed by Jason Anthony. I'm a little more careful these days. I fell down twice this week already, and so. But it was important to get here. What changed was the issued the 2023 manual uniform traffic control devices. And what it said was all the old rules where we were fixed with warrants and things like that, rescinded. And what that does is essentially because I met the head of the Federal Highway Administration when he talked at uh, NIMTIC. He's a nice guy. He's got young kids. He understands that change and everything is not the same. I'm not the same. I walk about 10 feet, but always with a stick because I'm afraid of falling down because I do. Kathy, they gave you permission to do what you know is right wherever you are. They know it's flexible, where warrants were required to meet certain standards. All warrants are rescinded going back to when they were issued. They recognize that you're an expert, your team is expert, and you know what has to be done locally and not one that fits every size. They recognize that every local jurisdiction knows what's going on, and within the broad outlines of safety, which been discussed for years, but never implemented before. So I would like to meet with your staff, sit down, across the table, as Jano says, nothing works like sitting across the table from each other. If you can set it up, I'll work with your team and we'll figure out what can be done legally to increase safety. Waited 30 years for this point. Thank you. Thank you. The next speaker is Jesse Figueroa, followed by Jason Anthony. Thanks. Yeah. Go ahead. I'm ready. Good morning. <clears throat> Good morning, everybody. Jesse Figueroa here, U.S. Army veteran. And madam, thank you for your service. I serve too. Um, reason why I'm here because I've been getting the reports that motorists have been dodging the tolls because they have um, fake plates, which I call them James Bond plates, which they order from Amazon. And it's been a rampant problem lately. And I heard that has been cracked down by TBT police, especially on the Verrazano Bridge where I live in Bay Ridge. So other than that, um, keep up the good work. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you. The next and final speaker is Jason Anthony. Good morning, Cassie. Good morning, Jamie, and the rest of the Bridges and Tunnels Committee. Uh, we are finding out we are aware that you guys are going to vote on Wednesday on congestion pricing. Uh, one thing I'm going to tell you guys is uh, vote with your conscience. Uh, I'm not going to pressure you guys to vote neither yes or no, but vote with your conscience. But have in mind uh, those uh, people with disabilities, uh, low income uh, people that live within the five boroughs, 
uh, those, uh, let's say in general, everybody that lives within the MTA uh, network. But having in mind that you guys have uh, advocates like myself that have your support, that we have been dealing with NIMBYs like New Jersey Transit that have been saying no to congestion pricing, that we are going to continue to pressure them to settle the lawsuit. And you guys are going to continue to have my support to pressure them to settle the lawsuit once and for all. And Kathy, you are doing a very good job, just like your predecessor and Cedric Fulton. So Kathy, keep doing awesome work. So that's all I have to say for this month. I'll see you guys in uh, Join Community Rail. Thank you. Madam Chair, that concludes the public comment. Thank you, Rose. I, may I have a motion to approve the minutes of the January and the February 2024 BNT committee meetings? Thank you. A second, please. And a vote. Fantastic. The, thank you. The minutes are approved. Um, President Sheridan, are there any changes to the work plan? Good morning, Chair Barbas. There are no changes to the work plan. Thank you. I'd like to welcome Mark Herbst to the Bridges and Tunnels Committee. And uh, President Sheridan will start off with her remarks. Good morning. And welcome to our, our Commissioner Herbst. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, covered widely in recent news reports, TBTA participated in the launch of an interagency city and state law enforcement task force, pursuing action against obstructed and fraudulent license plates. Following a blockbuster targeted operation at the RFK Bridge, Governor Hochul, Mayor Adams, and MTA Chair and CEO Jana Lieber, along with NYPD Commissioner Caban, New York City Sheriff Miranda, and representatives from the New York State Police, Department of Motor Vehicles, and the Port Authority of New York and New Jersey, convened for a press conference to reinforce our commitment to this timely and important cause. In just two targeted operations, the task force has seized over 130 vehicles, issued over 600 summonses, and made over 20 arrests, one for criminal possession of a firearm. For those who were toll violators, they owed over $335,000. Another targeted operation is underway as we speak at the Queens Midtown Tunnel. As Jano stated, persistent toll evaders cost the MTA money that could be reinvested into the transit system, so it's akin to stealing from the public. I'll be sure to keep you updated on developments related to this task force, as well as our own efforts. The message is clear as ever. Avoid trouble, don't obstruct your plate, and pay your tolls. Shifting to a more celebratory note, I'd like to acknowledge Women's History Month by mentioning one of our own at BNT. Yvette Morera was honored along with other MTA employees during last week's Empowering Women in Transportation event. Eve works creative magic on a daily basis at our central maintenance sign shop and is the first female to be a level three maintainer in our 90 year history. I congratulate Eve on behalf of our entire agency. I also thank all of the competent and capable women at BNT, and I'm proud to call them my colleagues. Finally, this month, we've asked our Intelligent Transportation Systems and Tolling Department to walk us through the life of a toll transaction. Vice President Nicola Angel will kick off the presentation. Thank you, Kathy. As a driver traversing a tolling site, do you ever wonder how you are charged using one of our bridges or tunnels. While crossing the tolling point of a TBTA facility is an experience that takes on average a half a second. You can see this in this video clip. For today's presentation, I have my colleagues from Tolling Technology and Tolling Operations joining me to provide some insights into how tolling works at TBTA's crossings. Sergio Reese, Assistant Vice President of Tolling Technology will kick us off. Sergio. Thank you, Nicola. As the vehicle crosses the tolling point, it moves under the equipment installed to ensure vehicles are tolled accurately. 
The image shown here is of a vehicle in the morning peak travel period at the Hugh Carey Tunnel where two-way or contraflow traffic is operated in the West Tube to accommodate additional capacity for commuters into Manhattan. In normal mode, the two lanes of this tube operate in the Brooklyn-bound direction only. However, in the image you can see that our system can accommodate the temporary change to either direction. The equipment installed in the lanes is quick and reliable and is built with both redundant power and communications to ensure proper continuous operations. Under normal operations at 40 miles per hour, the system has just over a half a second to detect a vehicle, identify and apply the appropriate toll rate, and capture the front and rear images. Let's have a quick look at the equipment installed at the roadside. First is the Vehicle Capture and Recognition System, known as the V-CARS. It has two cameras for each unit and a white light strobe, which is used for capturing images as its name suggests. Next is the Intelligent Vehicle Identification System, also known as IVIS. Loops are wire coils embedded in the roadway to count axles, detect vehicle presence, classify the vehicle, and or trigger the V-CAR cameras. After that, we have the DIVIS, or Digital Video Audit System, which captures full motion video of each transaction and is used as an audit tool to support the review of any anomalies in the lane. The antennas are used to read the EasyPass tags affixed properly within the vehicle. And lastly, we have the Optical Profile Unifying System, also known as OPUS. This is a laser scanner which is used to obtain a profile of each vehicle to help with classification. In addition, we also have host computers and communication systems that are used to support the collection, storage, and transfer of transactions. Next. With that background in mind, let's explore how the transactions are created and their journey to the EasyPass New York Customer Service Center. The roadside equipment reads the EasyPass tag, takes images of the vehicle's license plate, and provides toll rate information. The system then determines the type of transaction based on whether or not it has a valid EasyPass tag which was read. The transaction then is sent to the customer service center for processing as either an easy pass transaction if a valid tag was read or identified as a tolls by mail if there was no valid tag in the vehicle and it associates the images for each type of transaction. I would now like to turn it over to Mike Manuni, Assistant Vice President of Tolling Operations. Thank you, Sergio. The EasyPass New York Service Center, referenced by Sergio, is jointly managed by the three New York Region Toll Collection Agencies, MTA Bridges and Tunnels, the New York State Thruway Authority, and the Port Authority of New York and New Jersey. By agreement among these agencies, this vendor-operated program processes toll transactions and provides account management services for customers. For b and the service center manages 4.3 million MTA customer EasyPass accounts with 6.8 million active EasyPass transponders, more commonly called TAGs. The transactions and related vehicle images from the roadside system are placed into batch files for transmission to the service center throughout the day. In 2023, an average of 920,000 transactions are received daily from the nine B and T facilities. For each, for each transaction, the customer's EasyPass tag is read or a license plate image is used to apply the appropriate toll rate to the customer's account. More than 90% of B and T customers utilize EasyPass as a method of toll payment. To ensure that an EasyPass is read, we encourage customers to ensure their EasyPass tags are properly affixed in their vehicle. Additionally, having a current license plate listed on the EasyPass account, as well as a sufficiently funded account, are the most effective ways for customers to pay their tolls. For customers who choose not to use EasyPass or have an EasyPass account that is not sufficiently funded, the tolls by mail program is used for toll billing. Here, again, the license plate is critical to identify the registered vehicle owner to send the toll bill to the proper legal address. Accordingly, customers are required by New York law to maintain a current resident address with the State Department of Motor Vehicles. On screen is a typical tolls by mail bill. In this example, the license plate image is, is blocked for privacy, but is clearly visible on the invoice that the customer will receive. 
Customers are provided 30 days to pay the toll from the toll bill notice date until the payment due date. Payment is encouraged before late fees and administrative violation fees are applied in subsequent 30-day billing cycles. Customers also have online and mobile options to pay toll bills. They can pay online at the EasyPass New York Tolls by Mail website. Mobile options include enrolling to receive text messages that a toll has been incurred under the Tolls by Mail program and utilizing the Tolls New York app to pay toll bills. As is familiar to many who travel regionally by car, the Easy Pass brand is seen and used be beyond the New York region. The Easy Pass Interagency Group, or IAG, consists of 39 member agencies in 19 states that use the same technology throughout the network of toll roads, bridges, and tunnels in the eastern, midwestern, and southern regions of the United States. The common technology and operating agreements of the Easy Pass Interagency Group allow customers the convenience of one tag, one account for toll travel throughout the Easy Pass geographic service area. In 2023, MTA customers use their Easy Pass tags for approximately 130 million transaction on other states' roadways and crossings. On BNT facilities, Easy Pass account holders from other states were 8% of all BNT crossings or approximately 25 million transactions. Maintaining an Easy Pass account in good standing is the most effective way to pay your toll. We recommend to customers the following best practices to keep their accounts updated. Automatic credit card replenishment. Linking an Easy Pass account to a credit or debit card or bank account will ensure that the account remains adequately funded to cover payment for tolled crossings. Currently, 80% of customers' accounts replenish in this way. Properly mounted Easy Pass tag. This will help ensure that a customer's tag will be accurately read in the tolling zone to, al to allow direct toll charges to the Easy Pass account at the best available rate. Failure to, appropri to appropriately mount the tags in vehicles will result in, in being charged the mid-tier toll rate. Maintain current license plates on EasyPass accounts. In the rare case that a properly mounted tag is not read, the tolling zone will send an image of the license plate to the service center. If the license plate is associated with an EasyPass account, the toll will be charged to the EasyPass account. If a license plate is not updated on an EasyPass account, the customer will receive a toll bill. Opt in to mobile alerts. It is highly recommended that EasyPass account holders choose the option to receive text or email notifications of changes to their accounts, including low balance alerts, notification of account replenishments, payment method changes, and program updates. Download the free Tolls NY mobile app. Features of the app allow customers to con conveniently see all EasyPass toll charges and keep account information updated. With Tolls NY, customers can replenish their accounts, update contact and vehicle information, request a new tag, as well as report tag as lost or stolen. Update address with the DMV. If we do need to send a customer a toll bill, the on-file DMV address is used to mail a notice. Keeping the address current, which as previously stated, is required by New York State law, is important for the vehicle owner to be notified of tolls and make timely payments. Finally, Vanilla Direct for customers who prefer to use cash. Introduced in 2023, Vanilla Direct is a convenient and secure way for customers to pay a toll bill, toll bill invoice, fees, or add funds to an EasyPass account with cash. The EasyPass New York website lists the locations of participating retailers. Thank you. We hope we have provided insightful information on how a toll transaction is processed and paid by customers. Thank you, Mike, Sergio, and Nicola. Are there any questions? Commissioner Albert. Thanks, President Sheridan. Um, after your report, it occurred to me, when our police officers seize a vehicle for 
beating the toll or obscuring their plate in some way. Do we attempt to find out where that piece of equipment was purchased? The the it what the covering on the plate? Covering or the flipping of the plate like James Bond style like you were you know, mentioned earlier? I believe there's a series of questions that the officer asks the, the driver. Um, Rich, do you know if that's one of the questions? Yes, we, we uh, attempt to obtain the information. Unfortunately, we cannot confiscate those because they do belong to the motorist, but we do try to find out where and that information is passed along. And I believe that I heard at a former meeting that Amazon was selling these, but they have been told to stop. Amazon did agree to not sell them to addresses, don't you ship them to addresses in New York, you are still able to obtain them. Uh, th there are ways around that. Uh, thank you. Commissioner Valdivia. Great. Thank you so much for the presentation. Uh, so for, you know, those obviously newer to the MTA, um, open roll tolling was kind of a huge sweeping change um, for the MTA. And so really appreciate kind of the overview of all of the different systems. I'm interested to know, Juan, um, given the open road tolling experience you've had, what are the areas of improvements that you're looking at? Where are the areas where um, there might be gaps? I mean, obviously you have a lot of different layers of technology, but would love to kind of check in on that in terms of kind of the next phase um, for you all, whether that's validation. You know, I, I don't want to speculate, but that's my first question. Nicola? I'm actually going to turn that over to Sergio. We are looking to, obviously, every six to seven years, we have to maintain and upgrade the system. And so we are looking at different policy changes to help improve how things are processed, how transactions um, are related to customer statements and make that more efficient. Um, but from the in-lane or roadside, there are some opportunities that we are taking advantage of. Now let Sergio speak to that. Thank you, Nicola. Um, Midori, essentially, the, the system is very robust. It has a lot of failovers. The most problematic component with any toll collection system of this type is the in-road sensors because they require closures to replace and it takes quite a bit amount of time to do it. Um, going forward, if we were to move something more optical based, as is CBD, uh, that time would be reduced and there would be no need to go ahead and close for any type of in-lane in activity on the road surface. Okay, thank you. May I ask one other question? Um, so you talk about the Easy Pass system. We've talked about the transponders. That's been around with us for a long time. Is there any sense of what is like the next wave of technology? Not asking you all to commit to anything, obviously, but um, Easy Pass serves many, many states. Any kind of research or interest in what, what might be next? Sergio, do you want to feel that one as well, or Mike? Sure. Uh, Thank you, Midori. Uh, the, the, the Easy Pass is the backbone of the uh, Easy Pass brand, the Easy Pass network. But uh, I think the next newest technology will be uh, smart cars, uh, tolling apps uh, by vehicles, and uh, uh, third party providers. Uh, it's under development. Thank you. Commissioner Bringman. Yes, what is the violations processing center? I assume that has something to do with toll collections. Are you referring to the customer service center? Okay. Well, there's something also called the violations processing center. So it's part our of bridges and tunnels. It's our violations are processed within our customer service center in the back office. And so that process in by itself we can speak to in terms of when the customer receive a violation notice, what happens to it? Okay, yeah. Sure, a customer will receive a toll bill, uh, uh, 30, and if it remains unpaid, we'll send out a second toll bill uh, within 30 days. If that remains unpaid, uh, the customer will get a violation notice, okay, which will incur the, uh, uh, the, you know, the, the administrative violation fee, and they're, you know, we will pursue them through uh, various means, okay, they, through persistent toll violators, the views, registration, suspension. So our encouragement is for the, uh, the, vi the toll payer to pay their toll prior to it receiving a violation notice, the escalation, escalated procedures. Okay, but we have a special section that just deals with those people. 
we we do have a uh, uh, we do have a uh, uh, hotlines those people can call if they're DMV suspended, uh, and of course we try to uh, encourage and uh, make convenient for people to pay their tolls before they reach the violation status. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Brown. Yeah, it's an impressive array of um, participants in the Easy Pass program. It must be like two thirds of the population in the United States. Those are all uh, big population states for the most part. And that's an impressive uh, array. Now, how many of those states, if any, um, do not help us um, with the um, enforcement of the toll violators? It's my understanding there's many states that do not um, do not pass along our uh, our uh, legal responsibilities to the um, operators of the vehicles, um, and if so, if there still is those, I'm sure there still is some states that don't respond. What's the incentive for somebody who lives in those states to pay any of these tolls, other than ultimately getting busted by um, a uh, B and T officer or? Um, some other mechanism to hold uh, hold their vehicle in some way. Um, how many of those states that are an easy pass uh, do not uh, help us enforce the violators? So we have reciprocity, reciprocity with Massachusetts only. Um, we are currently in conversations with Pennsylvania, and New Jersey has recently passed a law um, allowing them to enter into reciprocity agreements. So we're hopeful that we will be able to do that as well. Allison, if you want to elaborate. Yes, thank you. Uh, yeah, I think I also want to be clear. We actually do have our agreements through the Easy Pass group with all of those states, and so we are constantly sending daily information back and forth related to ve to the vehicles that we're seeing in terms of the valid tags or tolls by mail uh, vehicles. That's important. So in essence, we are cooperating with all of them. They are cooperating with us at different levels. Uh, as Kathy said, in order to have the reciprocity, changes are needed legislatively. So in cases where the agencies may want to cooperate, they still need the changes through their own legislation. Uh, we were fortunate in New York State to get that legislation some years ago, which has allowed us to have that reciprocity. Uh, the last thing I want to say in terms of your question as to why would they pay, um, vehicle suspensions aren't the only things. We also use collections, and collections works across state boundaries. Commissioner Albert. Yes, I, I noticed on that map that you had up earlier that the big gap was Connecticut. Is Connecticut not doing anything with Easy Pass at this at this point in time? And I with all those commuters that come here from Connecticut, that's that was a big miss miss in the, in that map. <laughs> right. I I don't. It's not that the customers aren't using Easy Pass. It's that Connecticut doesn't have any tolling facilities. Correct. That's a big policy. I see. Okay. Okay. I think we're done with questions. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> um, can you can you remind me how cybersecurity works again with all of these systems? Is it through kind of MTAIT? I assume you're having your vendors hold to a certain standard, but some, some a little bit of overview, and if it's too sensitive, I'm happy to take that offline. Thank you. I think most importantly, we're guided by our legislation that was set up many years ago when Easy Pass was formed, and we take that very seriously. Everything from making sure that the uh, transactions are purely for the purposes of toll collection, uh, and we and our vendors and anybody and everybody in our process who touches it um, have the tightest cybersecurity possible. Okay. Uh, real, real quick. Sure. Not a question. Just a, for next month, can you can you update us on staffing, staffing needs like for the enforcement, uh, especially as things are going to heat up uh, down the road? And obviously, we're making a lot of progress. So, can you do like a little uh, uh, a forecast for the future as far as BNT officers, supervisors, things along those lines to ensure that we stay on top of that kind of stuff? Sure. Happy to. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Finally, there are no procurements this month, and this concludes BNT's report. Okay, may I have a motion to adjourn? Second, um, any discussion, or we had our questions and answered already? Okay, great, a vote? We have to vote to adjourn. All right, great, thank you.